I give you a, a brief overview of what we call the Niwa Meso Micro Challenge, uh, um, which is now in phase two, which is related to all the experiments we have done in the Niwa project in complex terrain conditions. And I'll, I'll introduce how we're going to do benchmarking with an example based on the Alex 17 experiment, which is uh, the one that has been uh, uh, developed in Spain and which is still going. So this benchmark is not going to happen soon. It's something that uh, we, we plan to have in the beginning of uh, 2019. But I think it's a good uh, opportunity to, to anticipate uh, what's going to be the, the benchmark setup uh, already. OK, so we are in phase two because there was a phase one, essentially. We started analyzing um, flat terrain conditions with uh, Cabao, this uh, 200 meter met mast in the Netherlands. And we did some evaluation of uh, mesoscale to microscale methodologies we are developing in the NIWA project uh, in connection to this, this site for which we have uh, measurements. And this was presented in the TORC conference, so you are welcome to see the, the, the paper there. And it also coincides with the first release of the NEWA model chain, which is uh, for now based on uh, CFD Win3, so our our CFD model based on OpenFOAM. And you're also welcome to take a look into that open source model and, and see what we are uh, offering from the NEWA project. Now, the second phase is going to progressively introduce more sites uh, uh, with increasing complexities, uh, starting with the Rodeserberg uh, experiment in, in Germany, and then we'll have Hornemos in, in Sweden, Alaith in Spain, and Perdigao in, in Portugal. The first results uh, are in the next Win Europe conference in April, uh, which will be about cross validation. Um, I'll, I'll explain about that in a minute. And, and the whole purpose of all these activities to end up doing a multi-site evaluation. So not just focus on, on each specific site individually, but also um, do some analysis across the, across the sites so we can uh, identify what is the performance of the models in different wind conditions and different uh, site complexities. So in April, we, will, we also plan to uh, have the second release of the NIWA open source model chain, which will include um, the WARF configuration we have been using in the production of the Win Atlas, as well as some other uh, validation activities that are connected to these benchmarks. Um, so the NIWA project will finish in April, but we plan to continue uh, analyzing all this data into Wakebench, which has uh, just started in uh, uh, the third phase and, and will continue until uh, June 2021. So the idea there is to iterate on these benchmarks and incorporate more experimental uh, data from from uh, this all this uh, database we are uh, leveraging next year. And all these um, activities will hopefully end up um, producing a number of validation repositories, which we are going to connect with uh, the WinEnergy um, model evaluation protocol, which is the main um, deliverable of, of Wakebench. Uh, another interesting act activity we will uh, progressively introduce in, in Wakebench is uh, uncertainty quantification and, and numerical site calibration. So these are, are activities that are very relevant for uh, the IC uh, working groups on uh, DAS 15 and DAS 12, DAS 4. So the idea also with these benchmarks is that we try to address their, the needs of these uh, IC groups by providing them with um, what we could call um, golden benchmarks for validation so that uh, whenever you plan to do some wind resource assessment or numerical site calibration, you know what you need to do in terms of um, 
uh, verification and validation of, of your uh, models. So just to give you an example of uh, type of benchmarks we're going to be running in the next few months. This is uh, the experiment we are running in Spain, Alex 17, based uh, on the site uh, that Sener is uh, um, maintaining uh, next to Pamplona. So the experiment is, uh, includes uh, five scanning LIDARs that are working in, in Doppler mode to get velocity vectors uh, over uh, this um, valley that is uh, in between uh, kind of a smaller ridge in the north and the, the Alaitha mountain range in the, in the south where you, you can see the, the third side of Sener. Uh, we also have deployed six 80-meter uh, MET mast uh, across the, the valley and 10 surface uh, flux stations uh, at a wider uh, area uh, along and across the, the main valley. So the, the, the main objective of this experiment is really to to characterize the inflow conditions to the to the allied uh, test site so we understand what's going on in the interaction between these two ridges. Um, so at the test site we also have some uh, metmas that are referenced for the uh, prototypes that we are uh, testing every day and you know this this experiment has been uh, uh, conducted in, the, in a new project as a collaboration between CNR, DTU and the University, University of the Balearic Islands and also in Spain. So this is uh, more detail about the scanning patterns of the of the wind scanners. So in red you see where the, the wind scanners are, are sitting and, and the main objective is to to map uh, this uh, uh, C uh, type of transect that goes uh, on top of the, the two ridges and then across the valley at a fixed uh, height of 125 meters. So it's gonna be the focus of our validation activities in connection to these uh, uh, instruments. And we're also including some PPI scans to, to visualize the flow across the the, the valley coming from the north and from the south, so really uh, interested in the the wake patterns from from these uh, topographic obstacles and how wind conditions in, in the valley. So, in in terms of validation benchmarks, we we, we distinguish between those two type of um, uh, activities uh, benchmarks that are related to the, the development of the models themselves so how we can focus on a specific uh, physical phenomena and, and and develop specific features of, of the models and then other benchmarks which uh, are more directed to now that we know that the models have an improved performance because we have introduced this new physics let's see how it works when we integrate those models over a full year which is what industry is interested in with their wind resource assessment methodologies. Um, so the presentation that Johan Arnquist will, will present later on related to will be related to um, uh, the urna cycles. That's what we call a uh, uh, flow case for, for development of models. And then uh, the validation that we will do uh, in this uh, mesomicro challenge uh, context is uh, directed to wind resources and methodologies, so really more focus on annual statistics. But starting from the urna cycle uh, type of benchmark, the Hornomosen benchmark uh, setup has been defined and, and and the idea is to replicate that also for the allied sites to make the shows more comparable and reinforce the evaluation methodology that we are putting together. And also to, to establish this hierarchy of site complexity that started in the in the case of uh, Cabao by analyzing the Gables 3 dunal cycle. Uh, we'll continue with Hornamos and being a, a moderate uh, complex topography and then we'll finish with allied uh, with um, relatively more, more complex topography. Perdigao is also uh, eventually coming in, but we don't have a specific plan for now on, on who will lead that, that benchmark. So for now, I'm not, I'm not discussing Perdigao uh, 
in, in this webinar. So for, for, for Ally, we have two cases which uh, also correspond to the prevailing wind conditions in, in this site from the north, where we can see the influence of the small ridge on the large ridge. And from the south, uh, which is the opposite, in terms of uh, the wind climate uh, of this region, these two winds are, are kind of different. So it will be interesting to compare uh, the two uh, the flow patterns from the two DNA uh, uh, cycles. In terms of uh, the criteria to act these DNA cycles, we'll try to uh, find situations where we have quasi-stationary conditions in terms of wind direction and uh, mesoscale forcing, so just traffic wind as well as advection winds. Uh, we'll try to find days where we don't have clouds because we typically don't have that type of uh, uh, characterization in our uh, models. Uh, and then if we have different days, we'll, we'll select those that have uh, the largest range in, in terms of stability conditions. And hopefully, corresponding to two or three days uh, period, just to get this type of uh, cyclic conditions uh, happening. Uh, in terms of stability, we will use uh, uh, the reference measurements in the, in the middle of the valley uh, based on the C over L, which is kind of a, a convention, but uh, we could also use the fruit number, which is maybe more appropriate when we have uh, obstacles like, like mountains. Um, so you will read in the descriptions of the of these benchmarks that we are focusing on a reference mast. So this is uh, what industry typically has. So you would, you would have a reference mast uh, that was there measuring from the beginning in a wind resources assessment campaign. And then the, the cross validation that you can do is to predict uh, the flow in, in a, an additional mast that you would have uh, installed uh, afterwards. Uh, in this case, we have um, the reference in the middle of the valley, where we have one, one of these 80 meter masts, uh, which is also instrumented with, with Sonics, and is next to a, a Windrush uh, profiler that is measuring up to 400 meter, typically, uh, the wind profile and the potential temperature profile. So we have a very good characterization of um, of the flow conditions kind of in the middle of the experiment. Uh, so the target uh, sites for validation will be the, the MET mast uh, themselves, which are uh, typically at 80 meter level, and also the, the, the transect uh, of, the, of, the, of the wind scanners at 125 meter level. The wind scanners also have, uh, are measuring virtual mast at, at two locations, uh, in, in the north ridge at the intersection uh, here. And then also at the bottom of the Alaith uh, mountain range and the Otano site. Uh, so that's also a, an interesting place to, to measure uh, the profile at, at several hundred meters uh, above the surface. We'll focus on, on quantities of interest that are relevant for wind resource assessment. So velocity, turbulence intensity, annual energy production, and the shear exponent. And the results will be based on annual statistics based on 30 degree wind direction bins, and basically three stability classes, uh, unstable, neutral, and stable conditions, uh, based on the measurements uh, at the surface layer in the, in the reference uh, sites. Now, because we have uh, different instruments measuring during different periods, so not all the instruments are measuring over, over one year, we'll have to uh, analyze the, how representative are the statistics from these systems compared to the long-term. Uh, so for the long-term, we on the on the test sites, on this MP5 MetMask, for which we have uh, a number of years. Uh, so the idea is to uh, compare the, the, the probability uh, density functions of, of, this, of the short-term campaigns of, of the individual instruments with the long-term uh, PDF of, the, of MP5. So this way you can really compare if uh, when we extract some mean quantity, if this mean 
quantity is representative of the long term or not and, and then maybe infer what, what can be the uncertainty associated to, to this, this lack of uh, uh, representativeness so of course we will do uh, the assessment based on all kinds of visualizations of the results uh, scatter plots velocity uh, vector plots you know along these transects uh, distributions uh, and, and then profiles, uh, vertical profiles as well as uh, long longitudinal profiles uh, along the, the C transect. And we will aggregate the the results in terms of uh, metrics. Uh, the bias and the mean absolute error are the most basic ones, uh, and and they will include all the measurement points just to get an over overview of the overall quality of the of the simulations, but also. But then we will also uh, segregate in terms of uh, what we could call wind energy relevant uh, points, which are essentially those that are at the top of the ridges where where it is more more important for for wind energy. Uh, and these results will be um, categorized in terms of wind action and stability beams, um, and then we'll analyze how the results uh, correlate uh, against uh, distance from the measurement uh, locations uh, from the reference uh, elevation differences uh, differences in the in the rookiness index and other parameters related to the complexity of the of the site conditions so this is uh, giving you already uh, an overview of uh, what we mean by cross validation in terms of the Niwa meso micro challenge that we are putting together, complex terrain experiments, and, and also uh, how we go from uh, validating a, a flow model in a specific uh, conditions like a DNA cycle to analyzing that model in annual statistics over, over a yeah, full year of, of measurements. 